welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs for General Disturbance. This is the Bishop, the Tier 5 British SPG. This one's located on the south spawn of Pearl River Encounter and it's under the command of Arc 821 and you can see two marks of excellence on the barrel of his 4.5 inch howitzer, capable of 450 alpha, penetrating 28 millimeters of armor and with a reload time of 12.37 seconds. Well, Ark's got it down to 10.21, so he can really annoy the enemy. And you can see, instead of actually going off towards the cap, he's actually headed down to Heavy Alley. He's landed in a Tier 7 game, and he's Tier 5 RT. So every Tier 7 tank he hits, he's going to do considerable damage. Now, this little RT is a stopgap. Between the, um, the British having, uh, well, no RT really whatsoever, um, mobile RT that is, they built them initially from the Valentine hull, put a casemate on top and a 4.5 inch howitzer. Oh, he's actually not going to go heavy alley, he's going to try and support his teammates that are going towards the village. Okay, this could be fun. First shot's out and... Unfortunately, he misses the P-43 Biz, who pulls back very quickly after getting his first shot in. But uh, he can correct that. Rounds out. Lands directly behind the P-43. How do I know that? Well, I think that the guy was pulling forward just as he fired that shot. So it's more than likely he carried on moving after he felt that shell was on the way in. Now, they didn't build a whole lot of these, actually. They only built 149 in total. And you can see from this position, he can actually fire at that DSPZ. Fires a snapshot in. Oh, my God. He just got a kill. He just wiped out that DSPZ. He overwhelmed it. And he's now going for the Tiger. Rounds out. Just misses him, but damages the tracks. Unfortunately, that Tiger is now out of range. But he can get a shot from this OI, and now he's really going to inflict punishment on this guy. Because after all, they are just pinatas for us to penetrate. Just waiting for the reload before he pumps another one in. Rounds out. Another direct hit. You can see where the shells are impacting. That one was directly on the turret. He's adjusting his aim to try and get the boobies. Yes, he hits the boobies. I think the OI's realized he's in the wrong place. Yes, you can see that hesitant pull. He tried to pull back, and now he's been hit to the boobies again. I think that you could say is copying a feel. And the kill shot comes in, but it's not from us, it comes from the M6. And the P43 Biz says, I don't want anything of that. He pulls off. In fact, you can see him thinking twice about staying there, but ramps out on him. And that's another direct hit, this time on the side of the vehicle. He's pulled back. Is he going to pull forward? He is. Well, he's a hard learner. Rounds out. This time on the engine deck. It tracked him as well. Yes, he's down to just a few hit points. 11 hit points left. He's a one shot. Now, he got a bit of a rescue bloom there, which stopped him getting that kill. But the guy did stop his tank, and it's a difficult shot. But he tried it anyway, and we didn't get anything from it. But he's already accumulated just under a thousand hit points of damage and a load of assist. And that's a huge, huge benefit to his team, because one of those heavy tanks is now out of action. And he's headed off to start putting some pain on the enemy in the cap area, or near the cap area. They are capping. Now, it's surprising, actually, they only built 149 of these, but they only built them between 1942 and 1943. Originally, they only ordered 100 of them, and the prototype was ready by August of 1941. The British were originally going to get the, um, the M7, the Priest. In fact, they did get some from the Americans under lease, then lease. But in fact, they wanted the Sexton after all, because that had the 25 pounder, which of course was the main gun used by the British. A direct hit on the Tiger. That's a tier seven. 
and the enemy is capping but we're about to put another round in there the tiger p adjusts himself rounds out and another hit that tiger is going to get really fed up if he keeps getting hit like this if he pulls forward he's going to get shot at by our teammates and if he stays where he is he's going to get hit by arc who's having a whale of a time here he can just pump those rounds directly over the rock he's hiding behind and there's not a lot he can do except pull forward and then he gets shot at by our teammates he's down to 371 next shot could kill him rounds out no just off to one side but he's adjusting that's what we do we're arty players we adjust we fire and then we take out the enemy oh my god he got him he got him he's just taken out the tiger p but he has to move closer to the cap here if he wants to get more shots now the enemy is up by one on us we hold the village so it's perfectly safe for arc to be moving about in this area here but he needs to move ideally to a position near that t25 so he can start shooting shots at the enemy that are hiding within that cap area at the top he fires a blind shot in you know, say came out of aim view. I don't normally applaud people doing that because, after all, we want to see what actually happens to the shell to see if it actually hits something. Can't get a shot inside because the shell's coming in at a very high angle, and you can see that those rocks actually in the position where he's in at the moment will block shots on that quarter. So he needs to get closer to where the T25 is just to get the shots in. Okay, can he get shots in there? No, I think the lip of the... Oh, but he can hit the Jagdpanzer. And the Jagdpanzer fear gets taken out. Killed by the T25 too. Now we've got the Churchill 1. Now this is going to be fun. Yep, direct hit off that. 220 hit points. He's up to 2,000 hit points now. Ox really going for it. Lines up another shot. Works it out. Rounds out. Bit late on that one. Not to worry. He's got plenty of time. That's enemy RT though, firing in our direction, I think. Unfortunately, the Churchill pulls back. In fact, it looks like he's trying to get away. There's four left on our team, five on the enemy team. They've got two RTs. We've got two RTs. You can hear those RT rounds landing, but they're actually not going for us. They're going for the M6. And it's the enemy bishop that we're going for. Now, we know where we think he might be. Okay, he's going for the counter battery. Can he get within range of that bishop? He might be able to. He's knocking down cover. That might give the enemy RT a clue as to where he is. No, the rounds are still going after that M6. Now, if he can get the counter battery in, he might be able to either take him out or go after the VK3002D, who's behind the cap area in the, in the paddy fields. I was having a quick look inside the village. I think the M6 would have spotted if somebody was in there. Maybe the Churchill is trying to get at the M6. It could be. He's found him. Okay, he's within range. He can hit the Churchill. Okay. The M6 is going defensive because he's got very low on hit points. Rats out. Oh, big hit! 164 he's a one shot can we get the next round in he's still reloading the churchill's turning rounds out he gets him we lost the m6 but we killed the churchill one and that means now there's only three on the enemy team three on our team all they've got left is that super hellcat a super hellcat a bishop and a pp and what we've got left on our team and there's the super hellcat did he see us I'm not sure he did. But enemy RT is coming in. We got one penetrating shot in the Super Hell guy. I don't think he saw us. It's not that dinosaur. I don't think he saw us. Grabs out. That's a hit. That's potentially a high caliber. We did get spotted. Enemy RT will be after us now. The Super Hell has gone. We need to move. Quick. Otherwise, we're going to be a victim. The bishop misses. There's only two left on the enemy team. They're both party, And we need to get somebody into the cap. The T25-2 is moving in there. 
We know where the bishop was last seen, but we don't know precisely where he is. We don't know where the PP is at all. In fact, the PP hasn't been spotted all game. But he does have two kills, so we know he's not AFK. He could be anywhere on the map. He could be coming towards our cap. Okay, we've got to remember he's got a 390 meter view range. The bishop has only got a view range of 250 meters. It's very slow though. It's painfully slow, the bishop. 24 kilometers an hour. Even the Fifi is faster than a bishop. Okay. T25's in the cap. It looks like he's Ox going to go into the cap and try and help. Right, now he's parking himself next to the Jagdpanzer Fear, using the rock for cover. And he's covering the gap just in case the enemy comes in from that direction. Of course, if he does come in from that direction, yes, it's the Fifi. And the T25-2 sees him and he does fire. Now, this is where he needs to come in. And he needs to shoot and take down the Fifi. Yes! Direct hit! Shotgun! One shot kill. Ark gets the kill. And now he's up to 3,000 hit points with one enemy tank left. The Bishop. We know he's active. We know he's fired. He doesn't know where we've moved to. We've gone back to our position. The Bishop has to make a try. But he knows that if he comes in from the water side... He is going to get spotted. He is going to get hit. And he could be taken out like the PP was beforehand. I have a feeling he's going to start blind firing any second. And when he does that, we'll see the shells coming in, arcing in. And then Ark might get the chance to shoot back at him. If I was on the enemy RT, that's what I would try to do. Because I know that if I get spotted by that T25-2, it's game over. The best I can do is have a quick peek, find out where everyone is, and where they're sitting, and then start shooting from a little further back. So he could be hiding behind any of the bushes a little further off. But remember, he's only got a view range of 20, 250 meters. If he's going to fire, he needs to do it soon, or it's all going to be over with a cap out. That's it. They've done it. They've won. Well, something incredible happened. That was not only a ripped-in game right down to the last second, but it was also a third mark of excellence game for Ark 821 in the Bishop. Congratulations on getting your third mark. He also got an ace tanker out of that one, and he really performed for it because he did a huge amount of damage. He got a bruise medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got 13. He got a fighter badge for getting at least four kills. He got four exactly. But best of all, he got the high caliber in that game for doing the most damage overall. And it was played out just yesterday, actually. I'm recording this at, what, just coming up to one o'clock in the morning. And this was played just three hours ago. And he sent it in. Let's have a look at the... Team scores, 3,068 hit points of damage in total. The next highest scorer was the M6, who tried to save 2,174 hit points went to him. And the next highest damage was the enemy Fifi, who made a brave attempt to try and reset the camp. He got 1,762 hit points of damage uh, in third place. When it came to kills, it was the T25-2 who came out on top. He got five kills in that game. Just one short of a top gun and also one third of the enemy team. And Ark managed to get the second highest with four kills. In fact, they could have platooned, uh, but they didn't. So they would have got a Brothers in Arms if they had. But sadly, on this occasion, they didn't. And of course, well, it was a good performance from both of them. And when it came to base XP, of course, Ark got that one. 1,258, the only player to get over 1,000 in the entire game. And the next highest score after that was the M6 with 934. And in third place, the T25-2 with 860. I should actually point out the um, T25-2 only got a fire perfect and a fighter out of that game. Would you believe it? That's all he took away. He could have taken away a Brothers in Arms as well. 
but I don't think either side actually remembered to platoon at any one point during that game. We can see that Ark fired 26 rounds in that game. Now, the bishop only has 39 rounds in total. So you can see he had 13 rounds left at the end of the game. 17 direct hits on the enemy, 2 penetrating shots, and 20 splash. Damage of 3,068 hit points, of which 2,108 were at more than 300 meters. So he did do some close range shots. And of course, that big one was taking out the Fifi with a direct hit. And, a, and it was a, uh, a manually aimed shotgun at close range. And it did work. Eight enemy vehicles were damaged, four were killed, 725 hit points of damage assistance. Now he earned 46,386 credits from that game on a premium account, and he took away 1,887 experience points as well. But most of all, I think he'll go down as one of his better games. I think Art will be very happy with that one, because it was not only his third mark of excellence, but it was a humdinger of a game, because it, it went from one minute the enemy were ahead of us, uh, and then they equalized the score, and then they were ahead again. But he, it was a, a, a real ding-dong fight right to the very end, and Art was in it all the way, trying to get his team across the finishing line. And then, of course, he went into the cap to help the cap out and force the enemy to come and try and reset. It's just a pity that the enemy bishop just didn't try to get that reset. He could have done it. He could have poked out from behind one of those bushes or... Um, gone behind one of those bushes to find out where Art was and of course the T25 too and then lobbed a shell in in fact that's the one criticism I would have in the entire game was that they should have remained a little more mobile towards the end just keep moving about changing position just in case the enemy did work out where they were and start lobbing rounds in to get the reset of course they would have got the sixth sense to say that yes he did know where they were but of course, they wouldn't get that for a few seconds until he started uh, lobbing shells in. So I guess if the Sixth Sense had gone off, start moving about. But uh, it was still an excellent game. That, that's probably my only criticism in the entire game, because everything else was perfect. I hope you enjoyed that replay. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below, because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.